kind of where we are, where we've come to, and you say it's time to trim some stocks. Yeah, I don't want to give up. That, I don't want to. Well, yes, yes. I don't want to give up that name though. I think it's. Jimmy like, the Bull. Yeah, I love it. Are I you like still it. an Uber Bull? <laughs> I am. I am. But look, let's respect where the market is, right? I mean, I can say that with a chuckle. We can all kind of chuckle and say this market's gone straight up. Did you give the number of days it's gone straight up? I mean, usually you do. Oh, it's I don't like know, seven, seven days eight. in a row. Um, you know, we're up 20 percent on the S&P 500 year to date. This will give something back. This does not change my overall bullishness on the economy. It doesn't change the fact that the labor market's strong. We've got supply chain onshoring, infrastructure spending, all that sort of stuff. But we are likely to have a five to seven percent pullback. You know, it may take as long as September, which is normally a very tricky month, uh, or it may happen before then. But you have to have some dry powder ready when that happens. I hate the thing where you write it down and then you say, oh, I'm selling this to buy that. No, I'm going to raise a little bit of cash here. Uh, I, I do think it's time to do that. All right. We'll, we'll talk in a minute in uh, one place that you're raising that cash. I don't want to do that quite yet. Brian Belsky, I mean, your bull case is 5,050. Um, your year end target's 4,550. I mean, we're, we're right there. Yep. So when you hear Jimmy say, look, it's probably time to take a little off the top, what's your response to that? We would agree on a short term basis. I think, you know, much of what has happened has already happened, right, in terms of the stock market kind of catching up. Um, and I think investors are are kind of chasing things here a little bit that have not been invested. I think there's other areas of the market to be invested in as the market begins to broaden out here, not just financials, not just other cyclicals, not just small cap. Uh, and I think the summer months could be bumpy. Remember, last August was pretty bad, uh, and then heading into the fall. So I think we could get choppy. But well, last August was different than this August in terms of sort of where we are in the in the Fed cycle, and what we're we're potentially thinking the economy could be relative to what we thought it might do. Yep. Almost a year ago. Yep. Exactly. And so I, I think that we're going to get a, an opportunity. I don't think five to seven percent, maybe three to five percent, because I think there is still an opportunity for investors that have missed this move, Scott, to get in, kind of number one. Number two, I think people are still way too focused on the market overall and kind of missing the fact that we're in the midst of, I think, one of the greatest stock picking environments that I've seen in well over 10 years because dispersion in terms of where stocks are trading on a performance basis, on an earnings basis, and on a valuation basis are all over the place. That means fundamental bottoms up stock pickers. This is the type of area that you want to be in. Right. Right now. Is, is Joe, is the air getting a little thin as Jimmy would suggest uh, up here? Now, we don't necessarily have what you would term, you know, animal spirits or this no. euphoria in the market. The market doesn't feel like that. No. But it does feel like it doesn't want to go down and that you do have a, a growing chorus of people who are getting more bullish and that to some is a bit concerning. It, it feels as if the momentum is building to almost go parabolic in a sense and I think at some point we will go par parabolic. Like and, a blow off top. And yeah I think that'll be a near term peak and, and concurrent with that you'll probably see v the VIX actually rally because people are reaching for calls. <clears throat> um, listen I, I, I've said uh, numerous times on air over the last several weeks that the third quarter has the highest probability to be the weakest quarter of the four quarters in 2023. But here's a remarkable statistic. Jimmy, what did you say? Six percent down, you thought possibly? Five, Five to seven. seven. That, that only gets you to the 50-day moving average. That is remarkable. The 50-day moving average is at 43.11. The 100 is 41.76. The 200-day moving average is 40.43. So there is a lot of air underneath the market, um, but I do believe any type of significant correction will be greeted with a tremendous amount of buying interest, in particular because we have that mega cap put. Completely what's, agree. What's, what's your view, Jenny? So I think we're talking about different things, right? And so I'm listening to all this conversation, and everyone's talking about the market. And what's the market that Joe and Jim and Brian are talking about? They're talking about the S&P 500 that has 30% of its weight in seven companies. And I'm thinking about my market, right? My dividend oriented, which is kind of value leaning market. And that's really different. So I haven't, and then when Brian said it's a stock picker's market, and that's because dispersion and valuations are all over the place. So when we're talking about like the market pulling back five to seven or three to five percent, like, you know, who cares? It's it's all in the same, in the same. Yeah, but, I mean, you've, but you've had, you, you've, you've had to be in the right, quote unquote, right part of the market 
to have had a good first half of the year. Totally. You, ha you have right. to. Have and had. I haven't been there, right? So if you look at what dividends did this year, dividends were dividend indices and dividend uh, ETFs and stuff <clears> were up about 9% at the end of January. And then they had that pullback. So they were kind of flat. I mean, maybe they're up like, you know, two, three percent on the year. Actually, at the end of the quarter, the Dow Jones um, dividend index, with high yielding dividend index, was down two and a half percent. So now I'm looking at this thing like, okay, I don't really care what the broader market does because I think the setup for me is fantastic. You think